Hello and welcome back. Today we're outside in this stuff called sunshine which we've not seen for quite some time in the UK. Mostly it's the wet stuff that falls from the sky. So I'm not quite sure if you can see that. That's the inside of a valve. We're going back to basics today. We're starting right at the beginning. This is a valve, a twin triode. This is a Russian 6SN7, 6H, 6HHC. This is another twin triode. This is a 12BH7. A nice little beefy double triode. And the one that you see before you was an ECC83. With it taken apart. So all valves well let's start simple let's start with a triode all valves have a very similar structure and unlike a transistor you can actually see the physical working parts so in this case we have the anode which is this big folded piece of metal and it's big because it has to dissipate heat just like a transistor, we have to try and, any active device we have to try and get rid of heat. And that anode is surrounding, I hope you can see there, a structure inside which is the cathode and the control grid, which you can see here. I hope you can see that the camera's not brilliant, so I'm having to do the best I can. What you got there, that white thing in the middle, that's your cathode. And this, I hope you can see the detail there, it's very hard to see, is the control grid. The control grid surrounds the cathode as mentioned, so what happens is, inside this cathode you've got your heaters, which is just a filament of wire. That heats up, there's a chemical on the cathode, that gets hot and the electrons boil off. The electrons flow to the anode. And this is the opposite of conventional current here. So the electrons boil off the cathode, flow to the anode. But in the way is this fine grid of wire, which is your control grid. And depending on the voltage between the control grid and the cathode, either a lot of current will flow, a lot of electrons will flow, or little will flow. So I hope you can see that a very fine grid of wire. So now we're going to move on and we're going to look at a data sheet or part of a data sheet for a valve. So this is the static characteristics for a Russian 6SN7. On the left here we've got the anode current represented by an eye. Current is always represented by an eye. So we're, we're going right back to basics here. On the bottom we've got the anode voltage UA sometimes represent V is or voltage is sometimes represented by a U. All these lines going up here that's the grid voltage. And this line here that I've drawn at the top that is the maximum power dissipation of the triode can't go over that otherwise you know you're just going to knack your valve up. We're just going to call this valve the 6SN7 for sake of mocking about. 6SN7 is a pretty high current low gain valve. And perhaps we should mention some something about valves to start off with before we go any further. A valve is a high voltage low current device with a high impedance which is which is the complete opposite to a transistor transistor is a low voltage high current low impedance device so we typically have to run these things at in the hundreds of volts so we're now going to draw a load line Right, what is a load line? A load line is a graphical representation of the DC conditions in a valve. 
So when we want to design an amplifying stage, a voltage amplification stage, we have to set up the DC, con DC conditions first. The AC conditions are a little bit more complex, but let's just worry about the DC first. For a simple commoner garden voltage amplification stage using a valve, we need basically three resistors. The anode resistor, cathode resistor and grid resistor. By drawing a load line we can find out the values of these and set our DC conditions. This is what you call a common cathode stage meaning that the input and the output are common to ground. It's very simple. Before I go on to draw the load line when choosing the anode resistor, the bigger our anode resistor, the higher the gain. So if we use a 100k resistor, we're going to get more gain than if we use a 50k resistor, say. Right, let's move on and draw the load line. I've just drawn a preliminary load line there, trying to bisect each of these grid lines at about 90 degrees. And the reason I've done that is because if we want a linear output without any harmonic distortion then the change between each of these grid lines, if we can make that as equal as possible, then we'll have less distortion. So in this case, I've started to just assume that we've got a HT of 300 volts. And if the valve is passing no current at all, all the all of that HD voltage, all of that high voltage will be dropped across the valve. At its highest point, let's just pretend that it's 6 milliamps, the anode is going to be at 0 volts and it will be pulling 6 milliamps of current through it. It won't be in actual fact. In that case, that would be a 50k resistor to get that and that's just found by using Ohm's law V divided by I so 300 divided by 0 0.006 is 50k so in this case we can work out the gain but first we need to have a little bit of a chat about biasing on most audio amplifiers hi-fi amplifiers we go for center biasing and that means biasing somewhere on the somewhere towards the centre of the load line. We do that because that's usually the place where there's the most headroom and that there's usually the least distortion. A word about valves first, how they operate. We can't go all the way up to this zero volt bias line here, zero volt grid line here, because before it gets there, it's gonna start running into grid current normally the grid doesn't conduct any current at all but as we get towards the zero volt line here usually at about minus one volts the valve starts acting a bit like a diode and so the input signal will start to get cut off on the negative part of the cycle so we don't want that if we bias it towards the other end then we're going to get more harmonic distortion and we start to get in off we start to get into the point where the valve is getting cut off so we tend for a hi-fi amplifier we tend to bias in the middle so let's just choose an arbitrary point just for the sake of um, explanation you know as an example where are we we could choose something like nine volts so let's just choose something like seven volts somewhere here and this is the great thing about uh, designing valve amplification stages sort of ish will do it's all the actual situation when we put resistors and all the rest of it on it you're gonna get different gain uh, and different characteristics with each valve so we're sort of talking ish figures it's not gonna sit at seven volts right we could get that 
valve to bias at minus 7 volts by using a voltage source like a few batteries or um, an external sort of voltage source but usually what we do we don't we tie the grid to ground and we use a grid resistor something like of the value 100k to 1 meg is a very traditional value that is used and so for the sake of keeping things simple let's just assume we've got a 1 meg, one meg grid leak resistor there and that's tying our grid to ground so to get our valve bias we use a cathode resistor so that the cathode sits above the grid at something like in this case plus 7 volts but the grid is still negative isn't it in relation to the cathode and that's all that matters so in this instance to get the cathode to sit at 7 volts plus 7 volts all we've got to do is go over here and read off the anode current and let's just call that 3 milliamps 7 volts divided by 0.003 what would that be? calculation 003 and well that's given us an odd value of 2.3333 so in that case we could use a 2k2 resistor and that would do us. So very quickly and very easily we found out our three resistors. We've got a 50k anode resistor, a 2k2 cathode resistor and a 1 meg grid resistor. We can play around with any of those to uh, get the desired result that we want. So I was being distracted by a bit over here. Right, so we've discussed biasing a little bit. In guitar amps, they use different biasing and center biasing a lot to get different tones. The more we bias it more negative, it's going to have an effect on tone, and the more we bias it towards the positive end, it's going to have a good um, an effect on tone. Basically, because the the output signal gets clipped either through onset of grid current which is changing the input signal or the output signal is getting clipped but let's leave that be for now if you want further um, want to get into this further and read further on it there's a great uh, website called Val Wizard which is where I first started and got most of my information from so let's just have a look before we go into the workshop and have a look at a valve operating what happens when we put an input signal on the grid. If we put a positive going, if we put a sine wave in on the positive going part of the cycle because the grid is going to go more positive it runs up the line this way and so what happens is that the anode voltage will drop but the anode, vol but the anode current will go up on the negative part of the sine wave on the grid we run down the load line this way so the anode voltage is going to go up but the anode current is going to go down so basically if you are pretty quick and everything you'll see here that this type of input and volt amplification stage is an inverting stage so what we put in on the grid we will get will be 180 degrees out of phase with the input signal on the output hope that makes sense right right at this point I was uh, going to show you a valve working and have a look at it operating in more detail but the, the um, video's got a little bit longer than I particularly wanted it to be I just hope that I've conveyed the message in an understandable form. Not being a teacher, uh, it's a bit hard to try and get the information over to you. As I mentioned previously, go and have a look at the valve 
Wizard website and look at the common cathode triode gain stage paper there. You just download it PDF. It goes into far more detail than what I've gone into here. And then I recommend that you go and get a valve, bung a few resistors on it, and apply a bit of HT, B plus and observe it for yourself because it will make far more sense than actually reading the paper. In the next video I'm going to try and go into the load line in a bit more detail and swap a few anode resistors around and that sort of thing and hopefully in that one you should start to get what I'm on about if you haven't already. Right that's enough for now, uh, enough of me waffling on Hope you're all out okay out there in these uh, troubled times that we find ourselves in. Take care of yourselves. Ta-da for now.